My wife and I were heading out on a real estate shoot two days ago, and we had to catch ferry. It was on an island. And uh, so uh, there was a lot of equipment to have and a lot to think about, but I couldn't get out of my mind the Paul Total Station Ultralight. I was just thinking about putting it together, finishing the model, and uh, this idea popped in my head. I was kind of visualizing the 3D model, and I got to thinking about this bit of space that could potentially be added and very simply and add to the functionality. So what I did was uh, I got back after the shoot and delivered the final results. So that job's all done and I wanted to get back to it. So I uh, got in this morning to, uh, to the model and started uh, making some adjustments. And really it's simply adding this sub base to where the miter saw mounts. Now, um, it, it does add this piece of 12 millimeter plywood you can see from this edge to here. I actually shortened these uh, extensions. This is where the three quarter or 18 millimeter base that's permanently mounted to the miter saw goes. That slides in and normally this piece isn't there, slides in on top of these. So I shortened these by 12 millimeters and put this on and uh, that kept this four millimeter lip here which locks uh, the base in. This is where there's a dado on the bottom of the, of the permanent um, miter base that just drops it in for that positive alignment. And uh, that's a detail that's been there from the beginning. But what I thought was, if I could close this in, then when the uh, miter saw is in transit, or the, when the total station is in transit, if I set it up on this edge, on this bottom edge here, then I'll create this pocket. And without this top, of course, that's just open and things could fall out. Well, with this pocket, a uh, couple of things. Uh, first off, the main reason to do it is I can drop some things in here, like the, um, four, I use four of the flip stops. And so it's always pulling them off and kind of dropping them in or putting them in a different location and then remember to get them out. I can drop those in here. It's also possible I could drop in uh, the vacuum hose that I use for the uh, miter saw because that's a dedicated hose that always goes on. I could do that. So again, I won't hold things in if I flip the bench over on this edge, but um, that's just a matter of thinking it through. And even when I lay it flat in the trailer, the things would stay there. The other thing I did was... Um, you know, I'm wanting to stiffen, you know, this is a box beam design, but with this cutout here, we uh, have a little bit of weakness in this side that we don't on this. And so I had made this an 18 millimeter face and gotten rid of the cutaways that are on the um, current total station. So it closed this in. I wasn't using that space anyway. I did use it a little bit, put, uh, you know, pencils and things. Uh, when I was on the job, but I can stick those over here. So um, what I decided to do is I'm going to put this in and it's going to be glued and screwed in. And, uh, and of course, this cutaway has been removed. You know, it would have been the lower section of, of this backside. They would have been identical, just cut away. So, so that's kind of adding that back in. So instead of doing this out of 18 millimeter the way I was planning, I went back to 12 millimeter. And I just think by adding this in and then also with this piece, creating this box here, it, it won't be as strong as if it were just a solid one piece box beam, but it certainly I think will be enough. And so that gets me back to doing, keeping my material consistent. One more thing, Festool um, with their domino, which I have two of them, I have the large one and the small one. With the large one, they have these uh, a knockdown uh, attachments you can use for knockdown or permanently putting countertops together or putting furniture together and you basically use the domino to make the different holes and then they go in and they permanently stay in and then they can be uh, loosened and tightened to pull apart or to draw together. I would use those here. The um, I would probably if I did that I'd probably make this base uh, leave this at 12, but make this space 18 and, and do it in here. And 
and I have a bunch of those and obviously I already have the tooling. The reason I'm avoiding that is that I know most people, most contractors, carpenters do not have a domino. So I don't want to do something that's specific uh, to that. So I may do it on my own and show it, but work out a different method uh, to uh, n not require having the domino. So it's been brought up, why don't I do that? And certainly that would be the easiest for me because again, I ha already have the hardware, already have the tooling and I could just do it. But again, I'm I'm trying to think globally. And if you like these videos and you do want me to keep making them, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell so you know when I drop a new video. And also you can get a set of plans by clicking on the link right here in the video or in the description down below. You can find a link to the plans as well as a link to my Amazon store. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.